Hey guys, so welcome back. So what I wanna talk about today is actually from you guys. You guys asked me to do a video on some of the essentials when you're beginning with kayak fishing. And so uh, after doing this for a little while, there's a lot of things that I've used that I just don't use anymore, or some things that I've used and I've either gotten better ones or um, I just found a different purpose for them. So there's gonna be no particular order um, but um, these are the things that I have used over the years and that I continue to use. And so I'm going to talk to you about each one of them. And I'm going to go one by one, you know, for each one of them. What I'll do is I'll have um, the links to everything that I use in the description below. So that way you guys can go out and purchase them. And so I want you guys to know right off the bat that if you guys purchase through my Amazon affiliate link that I have in the description below, I get a little bit of a commission from it. So I'd appreciate if you guys, once you click on it and you purchase it, I, I thank you. All right. So what I'm going to start with is something that I've done a video on before, and it's about PFD. And so I have my two PFDs that I actually use. So this is the NRS Sanook PFD. And so this is the one for open sea or something, something like that. And so I bought this several years ago and I've used it consistently. Uh, if you see in all my videos, I always have a PFD on. Um, there's rarely a time that I don't have one on. So there's one thing I will tell you about having a PFD. You wanna make sure that it is Coast Guard approved. And so this Chinook PFD that I use that I've been using for several years now, it is very comfortable. Uh, but down here in Florida, it's extremely hot. And so for the first couple of years that I had it, um, it was hot wearing it. And there's a couple of times my wife has has one as well. She has the, almost the same exact one. And it just got too hot for her and she took it off. You know, we're in shallow water, so it was okay. So I went up this year and I went to the manual auto inflatable PFD. And so this one's from West Marine. Got it on sale, a little deal. This isn't on Amazon, but um, I'll put the link in the description. And so I definitely recommend if you're kayak fishing, make sure you have a PFD because you just never know what can happen. You can actually, you know, I stand up and fish a lot. And if I happen to hit a rock or a log or something and I fell and hit my head and I'm knocked unconscious, this will save you. This one, you just make you float, and this one will automatically inflate. Both of these two can be a little pricey. So you can always find them uh, on OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, or just get a, uh, an, a more inexpensive one, and it'll be, it'll be fine, as long as it's Coast Guard approved. The next thing is a fishing net. Uh, this is kind of a plastic coating, and this is for environmental friendly. So that way it doesn't take the slime coat off of fish because I fish saltwater primarily and especially speckled sea trout, they have this that slime protecting coating on them and this helps protect it. But I will tell you, I use my fish net all the time. There are a lot of guys that just don't, I don't like losing fish. And so there are plenty of times that I've gotten a fish to the boat and it's come off right in the net. And so I definitely recommend the net, um, it helps with those bigger fish, um, especially, so if you're, even if you're trying to take a photo and you're trying to get things ready, you can just set this on the side. I can put my foot on this and it hangs off my kayak. The fish can still be in the water. Um, and then I can take him out, take a photo, get it back in the water and it's good to go. But I definitely recommend the net. The next thing I have is an anchor system. There are plenty of different anchor systems out there. I have a Bruce Claw anchor. There's a mushroom anchor. There's ones that open up. In this video, you can see my wife opening hers up. Normally they're attached to a tether line. And on that tether line, uh, I have this uh, pool noodle. So that way, if I need to disconnect, it'll float and I can go back and grab my anchor. But this type of anchor system works. But then I also have an anchor pin. This anchor pin I use quite often, especially in shallow water. Um, this is a seven foot anchor pin. Uh, there, they come up to, you know, they have six foot anchor pins all the way up to, I believe, 12 foot anchor pins, you know, for boats. 
But for my kayak, this thing, especially in when I had my native Slayer, I had anchor pin holder on the side of my kayak. This is really good, but it comes with a tether itself. So this rope will attach to here and I can just anchor it in the sand, the grass, whatever. And then the line is attached to my kayak. And so it won't go too far. So it just allows you to, you know, pin in, but still be a little bit distance and you won't lose your, your pin. One thing I will say is they actually have floating anchor pins. I don't know how those work. Um, I don't know how good they are, but they do have those as well. All right, so number four on the list is a measuring board. And so there are times you're striving to catch that big fish. And so you need to measure your fish. Or if you're keeping fish, you need to know what's legal. And so a measuring board is a very good tool to have on your kayak. You can have um, just a uh, the pull-out measuring tape, but these are three measuring boards that I have used in the past. One of them is the Yak Attack um, or the Yak Gear. And the one thing I don't like about this one is the numbers are hard to read, but they it comes with a, a marker where you can blacken them, but I think it should come with that. I just like it because it is foldable and compact. The other one that I had, I've had for years is the slide out turn. This one slides out and it goes up to, I believe, uh, 39 inches, 37 inches. All right. This one folds out to 36 inches. And then, and then I also have a hog trough. These are more tournament style, uh, the solid kind where you can need, read the numbers. And this one goes up to, 30 inches. But like I said, guys, these are good to have on your kayak. Um, so that way you're measuring and make sure you're following the, the rules, whatever state you're in, you know, they're all different. So number five, fish grips. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have not used my fish grips and I've had a fish slip right on out um, that it was keeper size. These are the plastic kind. They don't have much that can rust on them. There's another kind that I also use. These, they're a little bit rusty, but hey, they work. These are the kind that you can pull like this. And these are good for sheep's head. These are particularly the ones I use for sheep's head because these are harder to get in the fish's mouth. But these are really good. All right, the next thing on the list is a pair of pliers. There are going to be times, guys, that you have to either um, pull a hook out of a fish's mouth, pull it out of your net, hopefully not out of your hand, um, but a good pair of pliers. And I would suggest um, aluminum pliers are really good. There's all kinds out there. Uh, these didn't cost that much. Uh, I've had them for a couple of years. They work, have a little tether on them. They have cutters on them as well. Really good to have. And so to go along with these pliers, I actually have some forceps um, that are really good. These things are so long that if you have a lure stuck down in a smaller fish's mouth that these won't fit in, you're able to get down deeper with these things and get the hook out. So these little forceps are pretty good. Um, I watched, uh, if you guys watch MDLR fishing, he is the first one I've ever seen to use these. He uses them all the time uh, for those smaller hooks and it helps uh, to keep the fish alive. So if you have a hook that's way down in there, you're not you know, pulling out their guts with it, but you're able to get the hook out and it helps preserve the fish. So these are really handy and they don't rust. So I have these in the description. All right, so the next thing is, is scissors. So I usually keep these in my um, Chinook vest I don't have a pocket here. So what I did, I ordered a boomerang snip tool. So this just goes onto the D-ring on my vest and it's really good for snipping braided line. I use braid all the time. Uh, very rarely do I use all mono or all uh, fluorocarbon on my reels. It's mainly braid because I'm in saltwater a lot. These snips are really good for um, 
when you have to cut line real quick, they're right there on your vest and it's really easy. It's right there. And these are the Salt Strong um, scissors. They don't cost much on Salt Strong. And so I'll leave that in the description. If you guys aren't a member of Salt Strong, you really should be. I'm, this is no promotion for them. They're not giving me anything, but I live by them. I, I wholeheartedly support them. And uh, I buy a lot of equipment off of Salt Strong. And I really suggest these. These scissors come in handy and they're really good for braid, uh, braid cutting. All right, guys. So the next thing I want to talk about is an actual paddle. Um, you want to make sure that you do have a paddle. Even if you have a pedal kayak, you absolutely need a paddle because you could be, you can mess around and go into shallow water or like what happened to me, my pedal drive actually broke when I was a good ways away uh, from the, the ramp. And so I had to break out the paddle. And if I did not have this, I would have been stranded out there. I'd have been doggy paddling on this, off the side of a kayak, but it doesn't have to be an expensive one, but it does have to be one that fits you. So you don't want a really short one if you're a tall person or you, uh, a really long one may be too uncomfortable if you're smaller and you won't be able to paddle correctly because it's just too awkward and big. You don't have to have the ones like this with the numbers on them, but I will tell you that it does help because there's been times where I didn't um, have my board or one particular time, the board that I was using broke, the, the gray one, and the fish was a little too long. And that was when I caught um, a 30 inch snook, which that's my biggest snook. I know that's not huge, but I'm still striving for a bigger snook. But I will tell you, a paddle definitely comes in handy and it is a, an essential on a kayak. So the ninth thing I don't actually have in here, my kayak carts. I have a couple different kayak carts. I have the Wilderness System kayak cart that I got with um, my kayak and the Sea Tug. I put a link in the top here of the kayak cart that I did that modified for my Old Town Sportsman. But I've used the Sea Tug for many years. And so having a kayak cart when you're transporting from one place to another is paramount, especially if you have to go long distance. You do not want to scrape your kayak across the pavement. It's the worst thing to do. And so a kayak cart will save your back, save your time, and you can load all your stuff up, load it up, get your kayak down in the water, and you can actually break those some of those kayak carts down, put them inside of your kayak, or just strap it to the, the top of it, and you're good to go. And the final thing, which is number 10, is a cooler when you're out there on the water for several hours. You gotta have a place to store your water, your little snacks, eating food, or if you're catching fish that you're gonna take home, you need a cooler to um, take the fish in. And so I have a hard case cooler. That is my preference. Uh, many people have soft bag coolers. There's all types of, of, of coolers. I would suggest having one, you know, especially when you're out there on the water to have bottled water, have like, have your snacks and different things like that. All right, guys. So that is my breakdown of 10 essential things that I think every beginner should have on their kayak. So whether you're fishing in a paddle kayak, a pedal kayak, or the new motorized kayaks, it doesn't matter. These things you will use in all three of those types of kayaks. If you guys want more videos like this, make sure you leave a comment below. Uh, if you did like this video, guys, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. If you've never subscribed before, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out. And then share my channel with others so they can see the type of content I'm putting out. All right, guys, till next time, remember God loves you. God bless you, may keep you. Peace.